Hello everyone, welcome to the today's lecture where we are going to learn about the life cycle of Puxenia graminis formal species critici that is causing black stem rust disease in wheat. This pathogen is an obligate parasite and causing black stem rust of wheat and it is a heteroecious rust pathogen that means it requires two hosts to complete the life cycle. One is wheat and second one is the barberry. And barberry produces pycnia and asia while uh, remaining spores like uridial telial stages they are produced on the wheat. Uh, that's why this uh, pathogen is known as macrocyclic rust. Macrocyclic means it produces all types of uh, spores and heteroecious. Heteroecious means it required two hosts to complete the life cycle. This Puxenia graminis is an obligate parasite, heteroecious pathogen and it is a macrocyclic rust and producing all types of spores. Coming to the classification, this uh, Puxenia is placed under the class Basidiomycetes order Uridinales family Puxeniaceae and Puxeniaceae under Uridinales rust fungi are placed which includes two families Puxeniaceae and Melomsoraceae. I already discussed in my previous class a uh, difference between Puxeniaceae and Melamsoraceae is, is the uh, presence of uh, that stock structure for the teletospores. In Puxenia, uh, teleospores having the stock structure whereas Melamsoraceae there is no stock for the teleospores that is they are sessile in nature. And Puxenia gramin is placed under the family Puxeniaceae and genus is Puxenia. Coming to the different kind of spores and the importance of these spores in the life cycle. There are mainly five types of spores produced in the life cycle of Puxenia. Uh, these are the uh, stage 0. Uh, stage 0 represents the spermogonium with spermatia and also known as pycnia with pycneospores. And stage 1 asia with producing the asiospores. And stage 2 it includes uridia and uridospores and stage 3 telia with teliospores and stage 4 basidia with basidiospores. Among all these 5 stages, spermogonia with spermatia and basidia with basidiospores, these are uninucleate in nature whereas asia, uridia and telia these are binucleate in nature. And Puxenia this produces first two stages that is Spermogonia and Asia on the Barbary plant whereas three other stages that is Uridia and Telia on the wheat where Basidia are produced from the teleospores during germination. Okay. And coming to the significance of these various stages, why these five stages has to be produced in the uh, Puxenia life cycle? Let us see each one by one. Coming to the stage zero why we call this a stage that is spermogonia uh, spermatia why this stage we call it as a zero the stage zero it represents the uh, spermogonia with the spermatia or pycnia with pycneospores here you can see the flask shaped structures below the epidermal layer which produces spermatia and uh, first before going to the discussion i will explain briefly about this structure here this is a flask shaped structure pycnia which, uh, which is having the sporophores. So these are the basal cells or the sporophores. These sporophores uh, uh, cut the cells, small cells and produce the, this pycneospores. This pycneospore uh, uh, they will release from this pycnia with the nectar like structure. And here receptive hyphae will produce from side walls of this pycnia. And uh, these uh, of uh, these uh, pycneospores uh, will uh, combine with the receptive hyphae. Receptive hyphae that opposite mating type. When this uh, spermatia or pycneospores, they will land on the receptive hyphae of the compatible uh, stain. Then the wall uh, dissolves here. When it will attach to this receptive hyphae, the wall between this uh, pycneospores or spermatia and receptive hyphae it will dissolve. The male nuclei will migrate into the receptive hyphae and it will become binucleate. So this is the uh, structure of pycnia. 
This spermatia produced in spermogonia, that is pycneospores, were recently thought to be functionless asexual spores. Because asexual, like in other fungi, how the scientists feel that these asexual spores, uh, they do not germinate. Here, mycologists also found that these spermatia are also vestigial bodies. So they do not have any function in the pycneal life cycle. That's why they assigned the stage 0 to this spermatia stage. But during 1927, one uh, researcher, Krazy, he found that spermatia are the male gametes and they have uh, some function in the life cycle and these are essential for spermatization of receptive hyphae. That is, receptive hyphae are the female sex organs and further consequent formation of asiospores. So, Krazy recognized the important function of these spermatia produced in life cycle of Paxenia graminis tritsi. But without uh, to avoid the confusion, they did not change the name and the state that zero remained as it is. And it represents the sexual stage of this rust fungi and nomenclature remained same. And this spermogonia with the spermatia, uh, these spermogonia are the, these structures which play the sex organs. That is the spermatia are the male sex organs and receptive hyphae female sex organs. The spermatia and receptive hyphae both will produce from this spermogonia. This spermogonia are formed near the upper epidermis. That is when the basidiospores land on the barberry leaf and the, they will produce the mycelium and this mycelium develops internally by producing hostoria and it develops into a, a, a flask shaped structure. This flask shaped structure known as pycnea or spermogonia and it will bear, uh, it used to bear this uh, spermatio, spermatio pores, that is spermatio pore which used to give rise to spermatia or receptive hyphae. And uh, this spermogonia form near the upper epidermis after 4 days of infection of the host by basidiospores. And in general it happens that several basidiospores at random they will reach and infect the same barberry leaf means uh, basidiospores, uh, uh, generally four basidiospores are produced from the uh, telium and that is teletospores. After germination, it will give rise to the promycelium. From promycelium, four basidiospores used to be produced. So, there are lot of basidiospores. Uh, what will happen? The many basidiospores, they will infect the same barberry leaf. So, in the same barberry leaf, there could be a opposite strains so that is positive and negative mycelium so they may develop side by side and intermingled in the barbary tissue so it contains numerous spermatia and these spermatia are exude in small droplets of nectar present in the spermogonium and each spermatia carries either of the nucleus depending on the strain of mycelium which produced the spermogonium that is whether it is a plus basidiospore or minus basidiospore uh, which give rise to the uh, that mycelium and all spermatia from the single spermogonium they carry the same factor or genetic makeup as that of receptive hyphae and these arise from upper part of the spermogonium and protrude through the osteol that is spermatia they will uh, protrude uh, this receptive hyphae also protrude through the spermogonium and they will uh, exude out through the osteol and spermatia with the help of nectar they will exude out through the osteol and when insect visit this uh, barberry leaf and they will carry this uh, spermatia to the receptive hyphae for uh, spermatization. So spermatization that means fusion between the receptive hyphae and the spermatia of opposite sex takes place through the agency of insects which are attracted by the honey fluid. This is the spermatization. After spermatization, what will happen? Uh, this uh, dikaryot uh, dikaryotization takes place. That is N plus N. That is male nuclei and female nuclei present in the receptive hyphae. First, initially single nucle uh, single cell will become binucleate. Later, this male nuclei with the help of mitotic division, it will pass uh, that male nuclei to the individual cells. Then all receptive hyphae cells, they will become binucleate that is dikaryotic and they will move uh, towards the uh, entire leaf. And the spermatial contents pass into the receptive hyphae I already told. Meanwhile, the mycelium penetrates the entire leaf if it is a barberry leaf uh, suppose 
uh, it infected the upper leaf then this mycelium spread from entire leaf uh, then this mycelium uh, spreads downwards also where that asial primordia will develop so downside of the leaf asial primordia will develop from where asiospores will be produced upper side of the leaf this pycnia is to be produced which release the pycniospores and it is presumed that spermatial nuclei which pass from spermatia into receptive hyphae reach the cells of asial primordia rendering them binucleate that means uh, that means if uh, binucleate cell it will penetrate downside of the leaf and asia also binucleate now in nature and uh, this asia will not form until this spermatization takes place because asia should be binucleate in stage if it has to be binucleate in nature means first spermatization has to be takes place until unless spermatization takes place and asia should not be binucleate so asial primordia fail to develop into asia until and unless spermatization takes place so asial primordia will develop into asia when only the spermatization takes place coming to the stage 1 stage 1 is the asia with asiospores which will form downside of the barberry leaf and asiospores are the first binucleate spores if uh, we have to remember this point these are the first binucleate uh, nucleate spores formed in the paxenia gramnes ttc life cycle and these are formed in the lower epidermis as soon as dicaryotization takes place okay and in asium is a group of binucleate hyphal cells so that is asiospore mother cell which gives rise to asiospores in chains and asiospores finally disseminated by the wind and under favorable conditions they germinate on the wheat or any other gramineous host plant but uh, we have to remember that these asiospores they do not infect the barberry again they produced on the barberry but they will infect the wheat host or any other gramineous host only and asial stage we also known as cluster cup stage because this asial structure represents the cup like structure that's why we called it as a cluster cup stage here we can see in the picture if we take it is a barberry leaf this pycnia are formed on the upper side of the leaf which are in a flask shaped and pycnia are for this uh, asia are formed on down side of the barberry leaf which are in cup like structure here you can see these are the basal cells and these are the adjacent cells these basal cells used to produce chains of asiospores and here this is the peridial layer this is the host uh, uh, host epidermis which cover this asio uh, asia structure and this mycelium when extending from the entire leaf this mycelium from the upper side it, it will spread into the lower side of the leaf and uh, this uh, male nuclei when germinate on the receptive hyphae and it will become binucleate uh, through mitotic divisions the male nuclei will pass into the all cells of the receptive hyphae and those cells also reach uh, lower side of this barberry leaf and so this, that's why this asia are also binucleate in nature and this asia are the first binucleate cells in the life cycle of this paxenia gramineus here we can see these two types of cells here in the asia asia spores uh, disjunctor cells are there these are asia spores and these are disjunctor cells which are small in nature these disjunctor cells are gelatinous in nature and helps in release of this asia spores and coming uh, coming to the stage 2 that is uridia with uridospores and these are called repeating asexual spores uridospores are generally known as repeating asexual spores in case of wheat as they function as conidia for the propagation of rust fungi that means uridia they can infect the wheat as many times as possible or they uh, they responsible for uh, spreading the disease from field to field also that's why we call these are as repeating asexual spores and these spores also can disseminate to long distances because they are having enough reserved food so they can disseminate to long distances also soon after infection by asexual spores on gramineous host that is e uh, here the case will be the wheat and this binucleate mycelium begins to form masses of cells and these masses of cells are known as uridia 
uh, which are binucleate in nature and produce uridospores. These uridospores we can see here, these are single cell, oval, yellowish and they are spiny in nature. If you see the outer, uh, the nature of this uridospore, they are spiny outside. They germinate readily in water and produce one or more germ tubes. So, uridospores when penetrate, when uh, germinate on the leaf surface, they used to produce germ tube and then uh, it will penetrate the host tissue and produce hostoria to absorb the nutrients. Uridospores are those spores which perpetuate the fungus throughout the growing season and they are capable of reinfecting the graminaceous host on which they produce. Uh, why this uh, rust uh, color to the wheat means because of this uridospores. Uridospores they are red rust in nature. Uh, that's why they, uh, they will give the uh, rusty fungus type because ur uridia are rusty in nature. They will give the rusty appearance is the uridial, uh, uridial stage and they are also known as repeating asexual spores. They spread from plant to plant and from field to field and this is soon becomes epiphytotic. I already told because they are having enough reserve food and they can disseminate from a long distance movement and they reinfect the wheat plant and they can uh, spread from field to field. And uridospores upon germination produce binucleate mycelium which grows between the cells of the host and in few days they produce new iridia and uridospores. Okay, I think we can under, uh, we understood the, about the uridia and uridospores. Coming to the stage 3, telia with teliospores. After uh, this multiplication of the disease and uridia, they will, uh, pay, uh, they will uh, disperse the disease and at the end of the season, wheat growing season, then uh, uridia will convert it into telia that means uridia will stop the production of uridia spores and they will uh, result in form uh, the uh, uridia will convert it into telia and they will result in the formation of teliospores and teliospores are teliospores they represents the perfect stage because in teliospores karyogamy and meiosis takes place up to now the mycelium is binucleate in nature uh, in but here karyogamy and meiosis not occurred but in teleospores karyogamy and meiosis takes place that's why we call it as a perfect stage late in summer that is at the time of har during harvesting uh, or ripening of grain teleospores or teletospores developed in the same mycelium when the uridia begin to seize here we can see uh, these are uh, repeating asexual spores uridospores and they will Uridia converted into telia where teliospores are produced which are binucleate uh, bicelled in nature and here karyogamy takes place the where fusion of uh, nuclear takes place that is 2n stage and after meiosis uh, 4 haploid nuclei will be produced and later uh, it uh, produces promycelium septa are laid down and single basidiospores are produced of uh, two different mating types. So this Pustules, that is uridial pustules, uh, which later converted into telia and produce teliospores are known as telia and constitute the black stage of the rust. Because these telial stages are generally produced on the stem or at the base of the leaf. That's why we call it as a black stem rust. And rust because of the uridial stage and black stem because of this telial stage. And how these teliospores look like? They are ellipsoidal oblong to arcclavate in shape and typically two-celled, binucleate and thick-walled with a slight constriction at the septum. Slight constriction means here you can see here it will be like that. So here a uh, slight constriction is there at the septal and karyogamy takes place which renders the teleospores diploid that is 2n and after that meiosis takes place which results in the formation of haploid uh, nuclei and teleospores are not capable of germinating immediately and they should have the resting period of several months and thus remain dormant until the following spring so after harvesting of the wheat they will remain as a uh, dormant structures either on the wheat straw or in the soil so after returning the favorable conditions uh, during the next season, the teleospores germinate and produce the promycelium. Coming to the stage 4, basidia with basidiospores. That stage 4 is the basidia with basidiospores. 
This basilius pose represents the sexual pose and stages 0 and 1 occur on barberry and 2 and 3 occur in wheat. Basilius pose can infect only barberry plant whereas Asia spores infect only wheat plant. This basilius pose how they will infect the barberry and early in the spring each cell of teleospores germinate here we can see germination of the teleospore and produce the basidium that is here basidium is the promycelium and the diploid nuclei in teleospore migrate into the promycelium this is here promycelium and undergone meiosis and four haploid nuclei are formed so here meiosis takes place in the promycelium and that karyogamy uh, uh, deployed uh, deploy nucleus here occur in the teleospore and meiosis takes place in the promycelium. And then after meiosis, septa are laid down to separate the each cell. And each cell of this promycelium produces a sterigmata on which basidiospores are formed. Here two types of basidiospores are formed that is plus and minus to demarcate the different strain. Here you can see here plus and minus and these uh, basidiospores they infect the barberry plant they do not infect the wheat you can see the complete uh, life cycle of this Pactinia graminis TTC uh, let us start first with the wheat plant here if it is a wheat plant that is graminaceous host first uh, Asia spore will come and it will infect the wheat plant and it produce the binucleate mycelium or uridospores which are coming from the hilly areas and they can also infect the uh, this graminaceous host and both will produce the binucleate mycelium and uridospores are the repeating asexual spores okay and after uh, producing the mycelium then uh, at the this uridospores uh, will help in dissemination of the disease from field to field and for long distance movement of this uridospores also and it helps in spreading of the disease at the end of the growing season that is before harvesting of the wheat or any graminaceous host this uridium uridinium will be converted into telium where you, it will uh, stop the production of uridospores and it produce uh, starting of uh, uh, this telitospores Teletospores are bicelled in nature and uh, here uh, karyogamy takes place which results in the 2N nuclei and this is a 2N nuclei and uh, during the favorable condition because it will undergo some resting period after resting period during favorable condition this uh, teleospores start germinating and give rise to the promycelium where in promycelium uh, meiosis takes place and the after meiosis takes place uh, this uh, uh, produce four basidius spores of the opposite mating types and this basidius spores uh, they will infect the alternate host that is barberry in case of Pactinia graminis TTC and from, because different basidius spores may infect the same barberry leaf so produce, uh, uh, produce the pycnial like structures on the upper epidermis that is below the epidermal layer they will produce plasky shaped pycnial structures. These pycnial structures having the basal cells and what we call as sporophores which produce the spermatia in continuous chains and receptive hyphae also produce here because this is one type of strain and this is another type of strain this is here you can see it is minus and it is positive and spermatia used to be produced uh, with the, some nectar like fragrance uh, to attract the insects when insects uh, visit this uh, barberry leaf and this spermatia will attach to these insects and when they land on uh, other uh, opposite strain that is receptive hyphae and this spermatia will attach to the receptive hyphae and release the total contents into the receptive hyphae to make it as a binucleate that is n plus n dicarion dicarion structure uh, so first initially single cell of this uh, receptive hyphae will become binucleate here you can see one single cell then this uh, uh, dicarion structure uh, dicarion stru this is dicarion structure 
and uh, each cell of this receptive hyphae uh, will become dicaryotic in nature because this male nuclei undergo continuous mitotic nuclei and uh, this male nuclei uh, successively moved to the other cells and this uh, dicaryotic mycelium also move downside of the leaf which produce the asium like the proto asium and after spermatization takes place this proto asium develops into asium like structure that is cup like structures where here basal cells used to be there and they will produce a lot of asiospores and again these asiospores they can infect the uh, graminaceous host this is the complete life cycle of pacinia graminis tritsi if you have any doubts in this life cycle just give comments below in this uh, message box so that i can explain and if you are interested in any particular uh, uh, topic related to plant pathology uh, just give your uh, opinion in the comment box so that i can make a video on that topic and thank you for your keen interest in this video and remember to like and subscribe for more videos if you like this video just share with your friends i wish you great success health prosperity and happiness thank you one and all